And this I'm is Eric. <laughs> Eric. I'm Marios. How do you say it? Marios. Marios? Yes. Okay. okay. Cool. Just Mario, but not with the O at the end. So, um, us. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right. So where is this university located? Um, our university is located in Berlin, in Wedding, that's a little bit north to the middle, but still the center area. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, All right. So we have wait, a couple of questions. Wait, what did you want to ask? I was going to say, is it in Germany? Is it in Germany? In Germany, right? Yes, it's Germany. Oh. <laughs> sure, just making sure. Okay. We're so, we were wondering. <laughs> Sorry. So we have a couple of questions to ask you, and I'm sure you have questions for us as well. Yes. Right? So, so would you like to start first, or would you like us to start off? Um, I would like you to start with a couple of questions. Okay, so we have 10 questions that we will be asking you. Okay. So the first one is, what are your feelings towards communicating via social media? And what are some negatives or positive and positive aspects of it? For example, using Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, email, Skype, Google Hangout. Um, what are your feelings towards this type of communication? OK. Um, usually. I just use this if I can't avoid it. So, for example, with a friend of mine who studies in Turkey or yeah, my sister who used to work in Zambia, but usually I do not. And um, it's just, I don't see the, it's not so that I don't see the benefits, but I think it's... Um, if it's necessary, I do, but I can also go along well without. Okay, so you would say that you avoid communicating via social media and you prefer to talk in person? Yes, in person. I also, my, the, my monthly fee for my mobile phone just is more about the calls than the messages. Oh, okay. More okay. voice calls, more yes. personal, quicker responses, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. All right. So moving on, question number two. Have you ever been stereotyped based on your gender, ethnicity, or social group that you identify yourself with? So an example can be... Uh, being stereotyped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, have you been like stereotyped in any way? Like, um, like she said, gender, ethnicity. Like, for instance, like, uh, like you being a guy. Um, have you been stereotyped in any way? Um. Ooh. Well, what is your uh, ethnic background? My your ethnic ethnic? Um, I'm a quite averagely white German. Oh, okay. I don't have, I don't have, have any guys from foreign countries in my family. So in your area is all pretty much um, German? Yes, it's pretty much German. Only sometimes I get some jokes from my friends who grew up in West Germany. I'm from East Germany, but that's the only thing. Oh, okay. What What are those jokes? Like an example. Um, wait. They ask me, "Do you know what is it?" It's a banana. Uh -huh. You know, they ask me, "Do you know what this is?" Because before the Berlin Wall fall, um, you only got fruits like bananas oranges or so on Christmas. Uh, okay. Okay. Jokes like this. Yeah. But it's only jokes, nothing serious. Oh, okay. So that's what um, 
West Germans would say about Eastern Germans? Yes. Oh, okay. 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 All right. So question number three, culture, cultures view time in very different ways. Um, in your culture, what type of time concept can you relate the most? So one of the um, time concept is monochronic, which is time is um, is the, of an essence. Is that mm -hmm. what you said? So like for example, if we're having this conversation right now, and I have to go to class at one a.m. in the morning, um, and I see that our conversation is getting closer to that time. I am going to end it because I have to go to class versus a uh, culture who is more of a polychronic. If we are having this conversation and I see that I have class at one and it's almost that time, I'm not going to stop the conversation because our conversation is more important than time itself. So which type of um, community or uh, time management would you relate with? Is time more important or the conversation pretty much? Um, so do you ask me personal or shall I um, find a culture? I think it's more like culture based. So okay, culture. I, German culture. I think it's way more monochronic. Okay. Yes. Germans are stereotyped as planning everything, also on the weekend. Every half hour is planned. Okay, so so then it is true that that's basically you guys plan everything out? Yes, I, I think at least the guys that are older than 30. Mm -hmm. What about you? What... What do you think? Like, oh. are you more monochronic or polychronic? <laughs> um, I guess more monochronic because planning a lot, because planning makes a lot of things easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, next question Have you ever been exposed to engaging in with different world views? If so, what? I'm sorry. So, exposed to what? Have you ever been exposed to engaging with different world views? If so, how was your engagement? One of these, one of an exa um, an example, sorry, can be traveling to a different parts of the world, different parts of the country, where you meet people from a different cultural background or cultural belief. Like, have you ever experienced that? Um, I guess an example can be like... I never stepped a foot out of, you, of Europe, but um, I, I'm always surprised if I leave Germany, how friendly all these guys are. Because foreign... And yes, they... They talk way more with you. So I think it's only a thing for middle Europe that you get a call from someone and he asks nothing about you. He just comes up with the one single question he wants to be answered and then a short hello before and then it's over. So uh, I think... So not necessarily yes. like conversation with you no, and no. how you're doing, what your life is about. No, no. Also, so so five mi five minutes of nice chatting on the phone are if there's one question that just matters, it's it seems like no, it's not necessary. So on the one hand, it's for sometimes it's quite practical, but on the other hand, it's also a little bit cold or um, not cold. With what culture is this again? Did you have this experience with? What part of Europe? Because you said you traveled to um, different parts, parts of, of Europe. Europe. Yes. Uh, what parts? Um, 
especially in the southeast like Albania or Turkey and I think they mm, they are way more hearty Mm. Okay. okay. So um, the next question is, are there some specific speech codes um, that you use that only community members can understand that others could not? If so, what are they? An example is um, we as, sorry, we as college students and um, we live in Northern California. So we use the word hella a lot when we try to express something. And that's a word that probably our parents wouldn't understand or wouldn't know what that means. So is there a word that you use with your um, friends or a group of classmates that maybe an older person or someone from that is not part of that group would not know? Um, oh. A lot of, but I think we also uh, take these words our parents used and nobody of our age would understand, like knorke or daily. But um, is it a lot? No. How about something you guys use? I, don't, I think the, the most talk the older me. ones, the elderly person don't understand is just about technical devices. I think the rest they can get up with it or so maybe for example maybe using like saying iPhone like oh I'm gonna use my iPhone like as an example that um, the I think other they understand iPhone but if it gets more specific they will just have a yeah their... okay. yeah okay it was but is there a specific word like for example the other students that we exchanged with from Finland use the word cool is there something similar that you probably use with your friends with your that friends. probably your parents wouldn't know your um, let me think about it five seconds abbreviated words or mm -hmm. Other terms that represent another um, thing, you know. Like for example, shortening a word would mean like awkward. I would use awk. W K. A W K. Like shortened words. Yeah. Whether it's in English or whether it's in like German. Or is conversation just really formal? between you and your friends? No, it's not actually formal, but there's nothing um, of that speech codes that just stuck in my mind, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. But there is um, slang words that you guys use, pretty much. Yes. Okay. Okay, so the next question is, based on your culture when you communicate with others, would you consider your culture to be a contact culture? which requires less personal space um, when interacting with someone. For example, if I'm talking to Eric, I would probably touch his arm or be close to him. At, or does, or a non-contact culture, which means that when we communicate with one another, we require space. So if I would be talking to Eric, I would be like not touching him, not close to him. Respecting not each other's Yeah, space. not invading his personal area. So when you communicate with others, do you find yourself a standing close to them? Maybe with a stranger, standing close to them when you talk to them, or like having space? Okay. Um, that depends on the situation, but I think it's, yes. It's a good thing to wet welcome to for a moment shake hands. But it's not me who's but if I'm younger I don't have to offer this. But in generally I'm not very touchy. And I think it's also when I look around that they most that they leave space but they aren't 
despite of they aren't laid back, it's just more, oh, yes, they leave space, but they aren't laid back. Okay, so just good enough space to where they're not fully invading, but at the same time, they're still respecting that, that boundary. Yes. Okay. Because like an exchange with, um, that we had with our, uh, our other friends from Russia, um, they said that they're more of a contact culture, like they're more of like really touchy, like they like grabbing each other's arms or greeting each other yes. with the kiss. Yeah, so German culture is more of respecting that space, but not, at the same yeah. time not being really far back and pushing away from the other person. Yes. And okay. you see also this difference in our university. We have a lot of students with ancestors from Turkey, and they are more like the Russian guys. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right, the next question is, Labeled to be part of an outgroup is called categorization threat. Have you ever been questioned on your citizen or cultural background? Uh. So an example can be like, oh, this is kind of like, I don't know if you're going to like, this is kind of like if, um, I don't know what example to give. So, for example, um, an example I gave was, um, my name's Lupita, so I'm Mexican-American. So when people hear my name, which is Spanish, they assume that I don't speak, that I don't speak English, so they might think I'm not American. Another example is in Arizona, there's a law where if there's a person of color walking across the street, the uh, authorities can go up to them and question them, like, are you a citizen from the United States? Something like that, like questioning, oh, are you really German? Are you sure you're not this? Something like that. Mm -hmm. um. Actually, um, no. No? I cannot okay. remember a single experience where I was asked this. No. Because especially my second name, Bergemann, is as German as hell. Yeah. But I, but I live in a house which is for students only, and here also lots with African ancestors or from East Asia, and on the free housing market, it's really, really hard for them to find an apartment because usually the um, holders, if they see that you try to try to get this mansion and they're skeptical if they don't, if they see a foreign name, despite mm -hmm. of what your monthly fears or whether you have someone who moment so these are for people that are of different cultures it's harder for them to get around is that what you're saying yes this is it. Or also if they would have someone who bails for them with a lot of money they they would still be um, on the last places of the table of who gets this apartment. Who gets the apartment. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So if you're German or of that culture, it's easier for you um, to qualify uh, yes. for certain things. But if you're outside of that culture, it's, it's a lot harder, more difficult. Yes, definitely. In most cases, I think in nine from ten cases. Okay. I think if you if you also don't um, look like a European guy, if they if the guys that see you can speak English, they would at first um, say hello and try to speak English on you. Like they don't think, oh, he doesn't looks like an European, so I don't think he's possible to 
speak in German. Mm. So if I were to go there to Germany, I wouldn't be as approachable to people who are German. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you would often find a situation. Okay. So my next question is, through travel, many people learn more about themselves. Was there a time when you traveled um, to any country and you learned something about yourself? This can be likes or dislikes that you learned about yourself. Mm. I think about what to choose. Um, yes. So, for Indeed. example, during um, traveling, I learned that I during the traveling I learned that I don't need much for my living and that everything is most okay. And I also noticed that I prefer to travel alone or with one or two guys. Or if the group gets bigger than five or six guys, it's it's all of course five and they all want to do something else but you just have to keep together in group so it's quite um more difficult for planning things out yeah yeah okay so next question um othered can be defined as being treated differently because of race gender sexual orientation religious identity or physical inabilities have you ever been have you ever been seen as the other in the community that you live in such as in the university yes i think in my university because now I study building system and energetic technology and most of the guys that study with me have worked as plumber or mechanical installer before and but I studied before a whole other subject I studied Protestant theology so, so you they see oh, they think. differently yes so i'm a little weirdo in this class or one <laughs> of the more weirdos okay okay so our next and final question this is a little bit off topic but what were your first thoughts that came into mind when you were given this assignment that you were going to communicate with two students from San Jose State. My first, my first thoughts. Oh, I just thought, okay, fine, let's do it. Really open to do it, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Did you think that we were going to look a certain way? Did you have any um, stereotypes. stereotypes of what? A typical American looks like? Um, no, definitely not, because for this, your nation is way too big and they're living a 250 billion people. No. <laughs> I, it's, or it depends on which region I have up in my mind, whether um, I knew that you were from St. Joe's, but I would have expected someone else if I, if you were from um, Kentucky on the Appalachia or so. Mm -hmm. So what would you picture from somebody in Kentucky? What, what would you think they would look like? Um, Actually, like an averagely, like averagely white guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
that's typically what it is. <laughs> so yeah, you're pretty spot on <laughs> for the most part. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up uh, our questions. Um, do you have any questions for us? Yes, the first is, um, what are you actually studying? Our um, prof said it's communication. Yeah, so my major, I'm studying for communication studies with a double minor in psychology and anthropology. Yeah, and I'm just uh, a communications major, um, straight up. I'm not really minoring in anything else, so. Okay. And um, you asking like in what aspect of communication? Um, yes, and what is the what is the aim of this study? So, um, with which skills you want to develop during? that study that you can later offer? Well, for me, I'm very interested in intercultural communication. So I would like to be a part of maybe a company and be able to, um, in a sense, promote it by talking to different people like around the world and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine is pretty much similar. Uh, I want to do a lot of uh, business networking. And I mean, with that, especially here in the US, like you said, there's uh, millions of people and all of them come from different backgrounds. And um, studying communications, it, it really just, you know, it opens your skills and talking to different ethnicities, races. So that's pretty, pretty much the aim of why I uh, chose communication studies. Mm -hmm. Was it different? I'm sorry? Um, is it very difficult to get into San Jose State University? So San Jose State University is actually impacted. So it is difficult for someone who wants to apply to San Jose State. Um, they need to have a certain GPA and they have to have a certain um, SAT, ACT score, which is what you take in high school. Um, mm -hmm. So it all depends on what department you want to apply to. For example, if you want to be an engineer, um, you have, a, have to have a certain GPA and have a certain test score because uh, the engineer program is really good here at San Jose State. Very so it's good. not, it's this school, you can't get in with just a low GPA, which is a grade point average. Mm -hmm. And Yes. How many do get more out of the test than a GPA? So, so if you have a certain GPA, let's say you have a 2.5 GPA, you have to score a certain amount of, you have to score a certain number in order for you to be admitted. So it also depends what test score the major that you want to get into um, requires. So communication does not require that, but I do know that engineer, that, uh, to be in an engineer major, you have to have a certain GPA, a certain test number. So it, it's just complicated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole other thing compared to here, because they nearly every technical university is looking for young engineers, so you don't have good grades aren't uh, coming from everywhere to get in. So it's easier to get in over there? Yes, it's, it's really easy. So it's not so competitive, like not a lot of people are um, aiming to be engineer majors there in Germany? I think everyone has the possibility to become an engineer, but not everyone has the possibility to become an engineer at a real good university. There are, I do not know how much, but Munich, Berlin and Dresden are 
are really, really good and those are harder to get in, I'm assuming. Yes, it's harder to get in, yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you usually work this late? I think it looks like you are in a computer room at maybe your university. So we are at the library, which is located here at San Jose State. Um, the library lets us stay until one o'clock if you're a student here. So for me, since um, many of my projects are coming or are being are going to be due, um, I do spend I do stay here until like around twelve or one o'clock in the morning, just because I need to get things done. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same, especially during finals, because um, at this time right now, a lot of assignments are, like she said, uh, being due. So, uh, a lot of students are actually here uh, in this library around this time, pretty much till they close, which is one o'clock, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I see that. Is this a mirror behind you, or are these two other uh, so guys? Actually, a window. It's Would a window. A at it? oh, it's a window. Yeah, hold on. We'll turn off the light so you can see. Oh, okay. <laughs> can you see outside? Yes. A little bit. Uh, yeah, part of San Jose. <laughs> and then this side over here, it's the library. Yes. Yeah. So we have studies, study rooms where little rooms where students can come in and work as a group for more privacy. So that's what we did. Uh -huh. And are there enough of those rooms? Oh, yeah. The yeah. There are eight floors. So in, so in three floors, there's a lot of these little rooms. Four. Yeah, you just have to reserve them ahead of time. Okay. Um, you said San Jose. Do the people call it San Jose or San Jose? San Jose. San Jose, okay. Yeah. Is San Jose actually the most big city in uh, Silicon Valley? Yeah, in uh, Northern California, it's it's the biggest. In, I think it's one of the biggest in the, uh, in the country, probably in the top ten for sure. It's really big. I just know that San Jose used to be the capital of um, California, mm -hmm. and San Jose State University is actually was actually the first uh, public university here at in California from my from what I've learned. So it was the first mm -hmm. California State University. It is a public university, yeah. but it is equipped quite well. In Germany, the public universities are overflown of students, and they actually can't handle this. Only on some private universities, you have good conditions, but these are, I think it's a minor group of students who studying there maybe one or two percent um, how how many guys are in one class like how many students yes how many students like 25 30 it depends it all depends on the class, the class. like yeah. for example if you're taking a biology class that requires you to do a lab then you would be taking a lecture you would be taking your class at a lecture hall which fits like around 200 students and then you would break off and go to a little classroom to do your labs so it all depends on your major and the course that you're taking mm -hmm. and i know in contrast to us you have to pay a quite high fee for your study so um are you more critical with your professionals 
I'm sorry. So are, are you a Christian? Christian? What we do for a living? Uh, is that your question? Or are we more like? More. Um. No, I. Okay, I start again. Um, I see that here nobody has to pay for his, his higher education or not really. They just have to afford their living, but they ha don't have to pay anything for their higher education. That's and awesome. I'm about to go live in Germany. Yeah, we're about yes, to go. It also has its, has its bad side. The universities are equipped bad, and I think if someone they are not critical with their professional or the guys who teach them. It's just that if the class is bad, they just lay back and say, so I don't care, I'll get this grade. Oh. They so the teachers, they don't really... Uh, so the students like, don't approach the professor if they are like not doing a good job? Is that what you're asking? Yes. And the professors are not really caring as much? You know, how is... And also the students don't care. But how is this relation between um, professor and student? Yes, at your university or generally, is it more? Yes. How is it? Well, if from my experience, um, my relationship with my professors are, like, if I don't understand something, I go to them and ask them, or I, I raise my hand and ask a question about it. So I have good interactions with my professors. Also, they have something called office hours, which is after class, they are in their office and we're able to go to them if we have questions. I don't know what. Yeah, and from um, a student standpoint, a lot of the students who go to these universities, they care a lot because um, like you probably know, we have to put in a lot of money to come to these universities. So both the students and the teachers they care. So if, if a student has any questions, um, teachers are more willing to uh, uh, help us out as long as we make that effort. Mm -hmm. And if you don't care, you're pretty much wasting money. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? Yes, it answers it in a good way. Yes, nobody sees this aspect that he's wasting money. Here. They just, they also don't see it as that in bad classes they are actually wasting their time. Mm. And is that because it's free? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yes. This should be the main reason. Okay, um, one last question about your life around the university or the campus. Um, maybe like how many hours every day do you spend around your campus or your university? Do you also go to other clubs and make sports there or which parts of life are so um, depend on the university? Um, so so you asking like um, how, many, how much time we spend like school related yes. stuff? And which parts of your life are also depending from this university? Like um, you found your friends there, you have your clubs there, and so on, and other groups. So you're asking, um, do we do other things other than school on on campus? Academically, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Yes, you yeah, may I mean, Me personally, um, I go to basketball games. I go to football games. Um, there's, I don't, I don't go to a lot of rallies, but I hear there's a lot of pep rallies uh, where you know the student union comes together and they, um, they have different activities for the the students. Um, like for example, today was Earth Day here at San Jose State, or here, yeah. So we, they have like little events for us. So like they brought animals, um, they had little booths with different information. So we can access that type of like, yeah. So, right. Yeah, there's a lot of things to do on campus um, when you have the free time. Yeah, because many of us do work. So we 
are full-time students and we also work so sometimes like for example me I'm very focused on my education so um, I have friends that also come here to the university so we kind of understand that education comes first and then if we have free time of course we can hang out go to these football games and all that stuff so it just it just depends right mm -hmm. And all of these, like the special day or the football games, this is all organized through your university or yeah, by the so university. Yeah, we have something called um, the Associated Students, Associated Students, the AS, we have a house where it's run by students who have funding to create all these events. For example, Homecoming, which is um, one of our biggest football rallies mm -hmm. with our rival. So what they do the whole week, they do like fundraising, they like give us free shirts and all that stuff. And we have access to that for free. So that's just to build the, the relationship between students here on campus. The college mm -hmm. community. Yeah. And we also have like, like they give like for Unfriended, there, this movie that just came out, Unfriended, I don't know if you've heard of it. But they gave us a pre-screening for that and gave us free tickets to go watch it. So they do okay. stuff like that. Um, it's, it, in Germany, it exists a cliche that Americans don't have a need to learn any other language than English. I actually can't believe that this is true. Um, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's. So I am, like I said, I'm Mexican American. I speak Spanish and I speak English both fluently. So for me, it's very important to um, keep that Spanish side of me alive. So, and I have many friends of mine that also speak Spanish. I have friends who are Indian and they speak, they speak Hindi and English. So many of the many students do um, are bilingual, they, and then they teach different um, languages here. Like I took an Italian class, so where I learned a little bit of like Italian. I can't speak it fluently, but I knew, know some words. They also have like Japanese, so it's not really just like we stick to English. Yeah. This country is like a melting pot. There's a, different types of cultures, so we all have different. We speak different languages as well, not only English. So many of us are interested in learning different um, languages. For example, I'm trying to learn Hindi. It's kind of difficult, but I'm learning. So I don't think that it's true. We all are interested in, in learning different, you know, different languages. For example, I know one of my friends who's trying to learn Spanish, just because being bilingual helps you a lot in a work setting. So if you just speak English and you have a person here that speaks English and Spanish or Mandarin, they would prefer to um, pick that person who speaks both languages because that means that that person can help both people that speak English and speak Mandarin. So it's not true. We just don't stick to And it, it also depends on uh, what region you are, uh, mm -hmm. you're from. Because um, I know here where we're from on the West Coast, where it's California, and um, there's a lot more uh, Spanish influences, and they kind of emphasize on mm -hmm. um, you learning Spanish. And if you don't know Spanish or uh, have understand little, it, yeah, yeah, you understand it. Um, I mean, it helps you out. You're at a disadvantage if you don't. Um, so, yeah, here in the U.S., they, they really encourage it. Uh, but it's it's really up to you whether or not you want to learn the language or not. And I know on the East Coast, uh, from what I hear, um, French is emphasized yeah. more. So if you know how to speak French, it helps out there in the like East Northwest Coast. Northwest Coast. Yeah, North. Yeah, Northwest. Uh huh. In Canada, um, you know, I'm pretty sure that they have those French influences. So it helps. Mm hmm. I'm oh, not yeah. sure when the other guys in my class, for example, see the benefits to learn English or Chinese, but 
Oh. I think also like for me learning learning how to speak Hindi is a hobby. Like I would like to I'm learning that as a hobby. So yes. either if like if your friends want to learn Mandarin or Chinese, that's probably because they want a hobby or as a hobby or mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. That's what I that's what I think. Yeah. Oui. Is there a lot of English speaking in Germany? Um, or it's uh, Dutch, right? Is that the language you guys speak? It depends on where you are and whether you're surrounded by more younger or older guys. Just yesterday at the station, I um, helped someone with translating to the guy who sold these tickets for the metro that he gets his right ticket. Because the guys selling them did not speak English. And you have this oftenness. There are so many tourists coming to Berlin, but especially in East Berlin, the older guys, they weren't taught English during school. They were taught Rush- Russian. Oh, wow. So there's a lot more uh, Russian influences and speakers over there. This time I try to work out with my English, but it's really a different learning because during my um, earlier studies I had to learn Latin, Old Greek and Old Hebrew, but not to speak them, just to translate anything. And there you have really, it's, you really have to cut the sentence into every single word, check it and then decide, okay, this is this word, so the next one can only be this word and then this and so. And in English, it is way other. I see a sentence, I think, no, this can't be right. It's more intuitive, and because of that, it's still a little bit strange, but ooh, I'm hoping <laughs> that it gets better. Yeah. Well, good luck. Yes. Any I other try questions? On. Us? you have any other questions for us? Um, no, no further questions. Okay. On my list. Awesome. And I think we're also talking nearly one hour. It was long enough, and I think it's nearly noon at San San Jose. Yeah. Yeah, almost hitting twelve. Oh. It's eleven fifty-seven p.m. <laughs> no, it's yeah. not. Um, well, thank that, you for exchanging. Sorry, I totally cut you off. Um, thank you for ex- exchanging with us. It was um, nice speaking to you. Yeah. Yes. Thanks especially thank for the patrons during the ARC start. And yeah. for the trouble with the hangout. Yeah, we had okay. we figured it out, though, so that's what matters. OK, good then. Yes, have a nice evening, and I hope this Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Good. Bye. Okay. Take care. Bye.